Gold Show. I'm your host, Damien Luis. Today we're diving into the latest movie and TV news from around the industry. First, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pondex, for sponsoring this episode. Visit Pondex.com. Use promo code CINEMAGOLD for 10% off your order. Our first topic, Mortal Kombat, has the highest opening weekend streaming numbers for HBO Max during this whole pandemic. Mortal Kombat has beat out Godzilla vs. Kong on HBO Max in viewership numbers during their respective premiere weekends. The highly anticipated debut of Legendary's fourth MonsterVerse film was years in the making after the studio announced the film as part of their lineup in 2015. Debut on HBO Max and in theaters in March, expectations were high, and Godzilla vs. Kong seemed to exceed them, breaking several pandemic box office records in its premiere weekend. Godzilla vs. Kong also beat out HBI, Bo Max's other high-profile March release, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Marrying a little under a month later, Mortal Kombat is a relatively untested theatrical property in the 21st century. The last film to be released based on the video games, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, was what many considered a serious major misstep, but anticipation was high for the 2021 reboot. Mortal Kombat's mixed reviews criticized the lackluster plot, but did note that super super fans of the franchise would likely love the film's many nods to iconic video games. And it appears those fans turned out in droves for Mortal Kombat's opening weekend on HBO Max. Samba TV reports that 3.8 million households tuned in to watch Mortal Kombat on the streaming service last weekend, with 1.7 million tuning in on Friday alone. Those numbers surpassed GVK's five-day debut, debut on the streamer and made Mortal Kombat HBO Max's most-watched premiere that Samba has ever tracked. Mortal Kombat is beating out Godzilla vs. Kong in terms of viewership, may come as a surprise to some, but as HBO continues to roll out high-profile releases on their streaming platform, it seems more people are now paying attention. Moviegoers clamoring for the latest blockbusters can tune in from the safety of their own homes, and it looks like Warner Brothers' seriously controversial decision is paying off. If the trend continues, the studios can see even big, bigger numbers with their upcoming films like The Suicide Squad and The Matrix 4. Mortal Kombat's weekend numbers also portend good things for a potential sequel. Insiders are worried that WB's release strategy could hinder the franchise's potential of their biggest films but there seems to be a clear interest in these releases. This would make it much easier for Warner Brothers to justify a sequel to both Godzilla vs. Kong and Mortal Kombat. With the studio's great streaming experience coming to an end in 2022, those films would be guaranteed to hit theaters, and with the theater industry beginning to show signs of a slow but gradual comeback, right now, everybody's winning. Let us know what you think about uh, Mortal Kombat. Have you watched the movie? Did you like it? Do you think there should be a sequel? Let us know in the comments section. And now we're going to give you our thoughts on Without Remorse on Amazon Prime. Tom Clancy fans can rejoice. After three decades at long last, a worthy successor, successor to the 1-2-3 punch of The Hunt for Red October, Patriot Games, and Clear and Present Danger, finally emerges in the form of Without Remorse. First things first, though. This is not the book you read in 93. The one that detailed famed Clancy hero John Clark's rise from broken man to a badass pimp-killing elite soldier in 1970s Baltimore. In the film, action shifts to modern day and follows disgruntled Navy SEAL John Kelly, Michael B. Jordan's character, on his quest to avenge the death of his wife, executed via a Russian gang with ties to one of those elaborate conspiracies centered around the threat of, what else, all-out war. Obviously, there's no way to fully adapt Clancy's massive 630-page book for the big screen. Still, writers Taylor Sheridan and Will Staples make mincemeat of the text in favor of a straightforward, predictable revenge thriller that bears only a passing resemblance to the source material. Even so, the film satisfies as a suspenseful yarn packed with a handful of Sicario-style action beats, 
including a 10 spit in which our hero must navigate a fallen aircraft before it sinks to the bottom of the ocean in a climatic standoff in one of those ready-made abandoned buildings in the middle of Russia, perfectly suited for an explosive shootout. Yes, for all its gusto, without remorse makes the same mistakes as the last several Kalansi adaptations, namely the sum of all fears, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, and the Jack Ryan series on Amazon. They trade brains for brawn in an attempt to win over Marvel-induced audiences. I get the reasoning. The majority of today's young adults would just as soon listen to Liberace than sit through the leisurely paced, intricately plotted PG-rated Hunt for Red October. Hence the need to up the action and simplify the narrative. But why bother? Early Clancy adaptations worked precisely because they didn't ca cater to action aficionados. Instead, they offered intricately plotted dramas packed with multifaceted characters who stood in direct contrast to the Schwarzeneggers of the day. Oh sure, Clancy pretty much disowned Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger for, ironically enough, oversimplifying the plots of their respective books, but still, or but such films still bore the renowned author's hawkish style and typically catered to fans of his work, i.e. audiences who didn't mind watching Alec Baldwin or a 50-year-old Harrison Ford battle drug cartels. Irish terrorists, Russian subcommanders, and shady government types from behind their desks at the CIA. But that remorse has its protagonist light a car on fire before jumping inside the vehicle to interrogate a mustache twirling villain. Later, he takes on a prison full of police officers and inmates during an outlandish sequence ripped straight from one of those cheesy Steven Seagal movies from the 80s. None of this is bad, mind you. It's, e it's even thrilling in its own unique Call of Duty style way, but it still ain't Clancy. And yet I'll recommend without remorse simply because, despite many criti criticisms, the film is a huge step in the right direction for as Clancy adaptations go. Its revenge plot may be overly simplistic, but it still works. The action is riveting. There's some fun, shadowy government stuff centered around Jamie Bell's mysterious CIA operative, Robert Ritter. That's obviously set up for a big screen take on Clancy's 1998 novel and subsequent video game series, Rainbow Six, a film everyone involved clearly wants to make, and strong performances from Jody Turner-Smith and the always reliable Guy Pearce to boot. Still, this is Michael B. Jordan's show, and the actor rises to the physical demands of his role while doing a damn fine job establishing a character worth rooting for. The star fits the John Clark persona better than William Defoe and Liv Schreiber, who portrayed the character in Clear and Present Danger and The Sum of All Fears. Even if his iteration feels more like an extension of his embattled Creed character than the cold-hearted, methodical walking tank described in the novel. Still, he has a solid foundation to leap from should the powers that be proceed with follow-up films. After two decades and two false starts, Hollywood finally delivers a cinematic Tom Clancy hero worthy of its own franchise. Next time, just pack a little more intellect alongside all those assault rifles. Without Remorse arrives on Amazon Prime this Friday. Now our final main topic, Michael B. Jordan and his potential black Superman. Michael B. Jordan recently addressed the rumors that he'll be playing Superman in the upcoming DC movie re reboot. Henry Cavill originated the current iteration in the DCEU when he debuted in 2013's Man of Steel. Cavill has reprised the role in a few films including Batman vs. Superman and Justice League. Questions about his future in the role lingered as Warner Brothers failed to announce a follow-up solo for Cavill. With the studio looking to the future in their upcoming slate, Seems as if Cavill's time is coming to an end. It was reported in February that J.J. Abrams is planning to reboot Superman for Warner Brothers with prolific writer uh, Bannett saying these names, Tanahishi Coates penning the script. The report indicated that casting had not yet been done for the film, hinting that a new actor could be coming on board to don the cape. Speculation began immediately about which major star could be taking on the role and Jordan's name has been at the top of the list of contenders for quite some time. Now Jordan has responded to those rumors that he could be taking on the role. 
quote you hear the whispers and the rumors and stuff like that and it's just a compliment you know i appreciate people that think about me in that type of way for these roles i don't really have anything more to give on that other than it's just flattering and i appreciate it but you know whoever they get or if it goes that way i think it'll be interesting to see he later said he's not aware of what is happening with the reboot but he is excited to see a black superman on the big screen Jordan could be merely playing coy, but with Jordan already having one superhero tent pull under his belt after playing Eric Killmonger in Black Panther, it's unclear if the actor would want to attach himself to another major franchise. Still, Superman could be a major role for the actor, and seeing as the DCEU is moving on from Snyder's vision for the franchise, it would make sense to cast a well-known actor in the role now that Cavill could be out as Superman. Wherever the future of Superman is heading, though, it's clearly in good hands. Coates has worked on Black Panther comics, and Abrams is well-versed in franchise filmmaking. With a star like Jordan at the forefront of the reboot, the new Superman could take the franchise in exciting directions. While some may be sad to see Cavill go, it's clear the DCEU is ready to move on from Snyder's vision and begin looking at ways in which they can reboot certain aspects of the franchise, beginning with The Last Son of Krypton. And that is all we have for today's episode. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Cinema Gold Show, and we'll see you tomorrow.